Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got a little something on the bench for you here. So we have our super duper mega ultralight 138G 4S 5 inch or V2.2. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're following along in this build series, you know we already did the frame. So we have all our modifications, all our pieces and parts. And then we also did the VTX. So the video is out on the VTX and all the things that we went through with that. And of course, I managed to make a 20 minute video on how to make a pigtail. <laughs> so that video is done. So now we're on to the fourth, uh, the fourth item, which is a beeper. So we're going to go ahead and get our beeper ready and everything I do to secure a beeper, to handle a crash and to be super loud in the bushes. So stay tuned. So if you uh, happen to follow along the uh, frame video that I did, I didn't really care for this beeper kind of hanging out on the on the strut of this frame, but it totally works. I mean, it's 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 still there, <laughs> and this thing's uh, cartwheeled across the ground pretty good. So just kind of strapped on right there, and uh, I was just going to do a video on how I've had a few people ask how how do I get that to do that. I like to soft mount them, so I like to have some some flexible wire between my beeper and the flight controller. I don't like soldering them directly. A lot of people, uh, you might see where they just kind of bend the lead in a little bit and solder it right to the flight controller. There's enough weight on this. When you crash, it'll rip the pads clean off your board. I don't recommend it. We're gonna go through how I do this, how I uh, create a little saddle for the beeper and how I basically solder that together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the soldering station together and let me just show you real quick here on this frame so like i said if you follow on the frame video you kind of know what i'm doing here but you see these two holes right here that's going to be the new the new place for our beeper these two outer holes are for uh wire ties to to strap it to the frame so i'm going to stitch the whole thing to the frame but yeah those two holes right there and there all right, so let me go ahead and uh, we'll get it set up. Just to let you know, these these beepers, I, I buy them kind of in bulk from uh, Mauser Electric in Texas. I'll try to remember to put something in the description for you. And then this is just basic stock wire for uh, silicone wire. So let me grab the solder stuff and zoom in for you and get all ready. All right, so we have our beeper here. And uh, keep in mind, the beeper has a positive side and a negative side. And on this beeper here, we have a positive that, let me see if I can turn that to the light. You see that little positive symbol kind of etched into the, uh, into the top of it. And then some of them, see if I, whoop, tiny little things. And then some of them have a silk screen. So if you could see that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take this this tape off this is just a little piece of tape to tell you the orientation um, what i like to do is on the other side I, i'm just going to take my exacto knife and i'm just going to scribe a little a little dash line in there so i'm just kind of scratching it so then for me i always have that little divot or that scratch that tells me and just in case that silk screening gets messed up so i'm going to take my little tab off here and then i'm going to so yeah, sticking it to the the black tape kind of makes it easier uh, to solder. Before we solder, we just want to bend these leads a little bit so we can take take our uh, Julie's our um, the pliers I'm using don't have any teeth. Okay, they're just smooth. So we're just gonna bend our bend our leads over. You just kind of be careful not to bend them too quick because they'll break off. All right, so we have uh, have them bent over all the way, okay? And then we're just going to imagine the size of a solder pad. You know, that's, that's basically how much you're gonna leave behind is roughly about the size of a solder pad, okay? 
Got a good idea. Now we'll go ahead and stick this on. We need to know that uh, our positive doesn't matter which direction. So I'm going to put the positive 5 volt side away from me and the negative side towards me. So that's, that's good to know. Let me see if I can focus this for you. You know what, for filming, I might want to use some, I don't know if you see that very well, I might want to use some clear tape. So we need to find these two little guys here, make sure we know where they go, right in the trash. And now I'm just going to take some rosin paste, some resin, rosin, depends on what part of the country you're from. <laughs> so we're just going to paste that up a little bit. You know, I might try to zoom in just a little bit more for you. See, see if that helped out here. All right, so we have we have a little bit of we just put a little bit of this on there, not too much. Don't need to make a mess. But you got to have something to, to be a catalyst between the solder. So I have a uh, have my solder ready to go. We have our iron up to three three hundred degrees Celsius. Just going to touch it on my iron first and we're just going to put a little bit of solder on there we don't want to sit on it very long because we don't want to melt or heat up the beeper uh, these beepers have a driver so there's a built-in driver circuitry inside here we don't want to damage you got to make sure that you don't just get whatever beeper because some of the beepers don't have drivers so they won't beep <laughs> when we when we're when we're wiring them into the quadcopter uh the quadcopter just supplies the signal so you have to have a driver built into your beeper um don't really want to get into how a beeper functions inside but you definitely want one that has a driver inside let me uh get my wire out here and we'll get it ready to go So we'll start off with our negative. Just going to put a little bit more solder on there. There we go. Okay. line here it's our five volt line we'll go ahead and put him on we have a little more solder just barely touching it and then setting it up now we're done soldering that we're going to take this part and we're just going to pull on it make sure not not too hard but just make sure that it don't come off so we have the soldering done so that's kind of how i like to do it and then let me zoom out for you here this is the shrink tubing i like to use so i get this from amazon uh, it's just really good shrink tubing so we're just going to grab a chunk of that and what i like to do is this just barely fits you can see it's like very snug you're not going to be able to get it up on there but that's the size i want to use so i'm just going to take i'm going to cut i'm going to cut the size i need so I want to overshoot this quite a bit on both sides, okay? So we're going to go, I don't know, maybe what three-eighths of an inch on each side. And I'm just going to take my screwdriver here. Kind of hard to... See that we're gonna walk them on and then I'm just gonna open that up just a little bit. You don't want to go too much because you'll end up ruining your shrink tubing. Something like that. <laughs> so you get some stuff out of your way. So we're just gonna put our push our beeper in to our holster here. And this shrink tubing is is really really strong, and it has a it has a really uh, thick adhesion inside, 
So as you heat it up, it it, it has like a like a built-in glue. So now we're gonna take a four-inch zip tie, and we're gonna put the uh, oop, that ain't four-inch. four inch zip tie here and we're just going to use the smooth side see how there's a where the gearing or the ratcheting is and then the smooth side so we're going to have the smooth side down we're just going to thread that on through okay so we're going to that's basically how it's going to tie on but I'm not going to use a four a standard four inch zip tie if you are going to then you want to have the ratchet side down but I'm going to pull this out Okay, so I'm just going to curve that around like so, okay, and see if I can get that a little bit tighter, and we're going to go ahead and shrink tube that. Now obviously if you use a, uh, see the thing is if you use a bigger uh, tube or more you know a larger shrink tubing then you risk the fact that you're gonna have um, you know a lot of excess but you can see this is tightening up pretty good here and then this side here we're gonna trim we're gonna cut some of that off and then of course we need to there's a little bubble there we'll go ahead and make a hole so let me go ahead and uh, let this cool off for a minute Okay, nice and cool to the touch. I'm gonna just pull this zip tie out of there. So now that's that's made a nice cavity for me to put my other zip tie through. So now we have like this little excess tube sticking off the back. We're just gonna trim that, trim that up a little bit. Okay, uh, the finished wire tie that I'm gonna use are are these. They, they look like a regular 4 inch zip tie but they're not here's here's like the one you get at Home Depot okay so like this is the what you'd see at Home Depot can you see the can't really tell there you go <laughs> it doesn't doesn't show up on film very much but in your hand you can tell so this standard 4 inch zip tie you get from Home Depot is, is just a little too big for what I'm wanting to do so I bought these from Banggood um, these are just a little bit different size zip ties. Um, I've had these for uh, a lot of years, so I don't remember exactly what they're called. So as you can see, since we made that cavity, we can slide our zip tie nice and easy through there. Okay, so I'm just going to leave the zip tie in as a placeholder. We don't need to worry about that. And then we need to cut a circle out here. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a, I just have a leather punch here. If you don't have one, I mean, you can just use an X-Acto knife to, to open up this hole. But we just want to... see if I can get that off here for you. Okay. So we just have the, the hole clear, so nothing in the way. So now this is ready to go on the quadcopter. We can zip tie that on, and then we can run our wires to wherever we need to go on the quadcopter, solder it off to the flight controller, have a little extra in case it gets ripped off. Um, if this, the big thing for me is um, this is insulated here. You know, there's no way for these wires to cross. Uh, you can touch the carbon frame, so you can stick this right on the carbon frame. Shouldn't have any issue. The, like I said, this this is pretty thick stuff so if you're using super thin stuff you might want to put like you know a, an extra layer of insulation in there maybe like a sticky pad or you know something but I'm pretty confident this this tubing is is pretty thick so that's ready to go on let's go ahead and just give it a real quick check make sure we don't want to don't want to put it on the quadcopter without giving it a little check so I'm just going to hit it real fast with some 5 volt so I have a 5 volt supply um, 
if you're not familiar with the channel um, I'll try to put a video card here for you of how to build your own 5 volt supply it's just simply uh, it's pretty simple so check that video out I'm just going to switch on and off really quick so rock and roll ready to go all right, got everything cleaned up, and uh, here's the frame. So we have our, our beeper here. So we're just gonna, the plan is, we're just gonna thread this up through the uh, custom made pad here. So if, if you don't have the ability to make one of those or or have that, you can, you can do this and strap it directly to the frame. I've had no issues with that. Uh, as long as your, your shrink tubing is thick enough, like I said, definitely don't want this shortened out. Um, so we're just going to take this wire tie, thread it through. And we'll zip, we'll zip tie that down permanent later, but there you go. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Little, just a little bit of flexibility so it can take a crash, but definitely not going anywhere. And uh, so now we can hook that up to our flight controller. And we're ready to go. <laughs> awesome. So, hey, I had a few people ask how I did it. I hope this was helpful to you. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hate it, <laughs> man, you give it a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze.